Tim with After Later Audio here. Today we're going to do a short video on how to use Summon Invert with Cascades to create quadrature signals. Uh, if you've been watching any of the Coco videos, either as a system or a standalone, you've probably seen Summon Invert pop in a few times, and I've seen some people asking questions about quadrature. So hopefully I can answer those in this video. All right, before we go any further, let's just talk about what um, quadrature signals are. So basically it is a sine wave with four outputs which are running at the same rate but are phase shifted by an increment of 90 degrees. So I'm going to run the sine wave out of cascades into channel one of the summon invert and then the cosine out into channel A of the summon invert. And now let's take a look at these signals on the oscilloscope. So there is our sine wave. And there's our cosine shifted out of phase by 90 degrees. And then here is our uh, inverted sine. So that's another 90 degrees and then our inverted cosine. And now you can see that is a quadrature signal. So I just built this patch using two different Coco systems and um, the, the quadrature signals that you just saw on the oscilloscope. However, I bumped those down to LFO uh, rate and I'm gonna use them as modulation sources. So just really quick to set up this patch, I've got this Coco system over here with the Canyon as the centerpiece. I've got this Cascades morph output uh, going into the valley. So this is another Coco system here um, and I've got the, the valley as the centerpiece. So I'm running the morph out into input one and then the cosine out of this cascades into input two. So uh, we're going to get a mixture of the, the folded signals from here. I've got the one volt per octave uh, receiving a quantized voltage from our 1U Allen. And I'm using actually this, the pulse wave from this cascades to, uh, to trigger the, the sequence forward. And then I've also got the mix output of the canyon um, going into another input. So basically what we're going to get is a mixture of the folded waves from the morph and cosine into one input and then the mixture of the odd and even harmonics that are being generated off of this cascades into the second input. So basically our baseline and our, our lead line, I guess you could think about it. Um, and then now to the quadrature signals. Uh, it's kind of a mess here and hard to see, but uh, just like before, I've got the sine and cosine going into the sum and invert. Um, so I've got the sine wave is actually controlling the order or number of folds on the valley. And the cosine is controlling, let's see, what is it? Oh, the odd and even harmonics uh, of the, yeah, so the odd and even upper harmonics of the folded waves. Um, I've got the attenuator right here in the middle, so it's gonna be kind of going back and forth there. Uh, then I've got, let's see here, I've got the uh, inverted sine wave controlling the crossfader between input one and two, so the morph and the cosine. Uh, and then I've got this uh, inverted cosine signal, <laughs> this is a lot to, to cover, um, going into the morph input, so that's going to change the wave shape on this cascades of this morph output that's going into the wave folder. And then I've got that um, molted and it's also controlling the crossfader between the odd and even. Um, not sure if, if you kept track of all that, but just in time for Halloween, this is what uh, came out of it. I also want to note that I am uh, using some of the cross modulation in this Coco system on the left here, which is providing us our, our sequence and our quadrature signals and our wave folding. Um, so we've got the Brooks is normaled into the FM input, or Brooks 1 is normaled into the FM input of this Cascades. Um, 
and then I'm also uh, using FM modulation here on both of these brooks. So um, I'm actually using the, the third oscillator in this coder system to modulate the FM of the second one, which is modulating the first one. Um, and then this, the one that's modulating number two is also being modulated by number one. And they're all in LFO mode, so it's kind of making some fun timing changes, so it's not just this plopping forward type of thing. Um, but yeah, this is a great example of how you could use two Coco systems and a quantizer to really like just make some, some really cool stuff. I wish I had room for a reverb in here. I feel like this patch could really use some reverb. But with power of editing, maybe I'll just add some reverb to it like this. Alright, that's my video on using the sum and invert to create quadrature signals. I hope this uh, cleared some of the questions that some of you had about just exactly what you're going to do with quadrature signals. And um, I, I addressed this in the standalone video of Canyon, but this is an also great use of subharmonics here uh, to get a nice low, thick, rich uh, bass to go under your melodic line. Thanks for watching.